Welcome to this platform. So in this one, we are going to look at uh, experimental techniques, but mainly we are going to focus on looking at uh, the apparatus that are used in the laboratory first. Okay, so different apparatus, we are going to go through different apparatus and mainly we are going to focus on their functions. Okay, so let us get into it. And the first one that we are looking at, we are looking at uh, the stopwatch. And this is how the stopwatch looks. So in an exam, you might find the drawing, but you should be able to identify, there are quite different types of stopwatch that are out there. Okay, different design, I mean. So a stopwatch is simply used to measure time. And time, the SI unit of time or the units of time, time is measured in seconds. So these things are very important. Just from the start, let me emphasize a point here. So these are very important. You don't know what is coming in an exam, but I can tell you that these are part of uh, what you're supposed to learn. Then the other, the second uh, apparatus that we are going to look at, we are going to look at the thermometer. The thermometer is used to measure temperature and what you are able to see here is an example of a thermometer. So I'm not saying that this is the only kind of thermometer that you're going to find there. As you know, there are different types of th thermometers. But in this case, we are looking at the use that is measure temperature. And the SI unit of temperature or the unit in which temperature is measured is Kelvin, which is uh, K. The third one that we are looking at uh, uh, is the beam balance. So beam balance is used to measure mass. Okay, so beam balance is used to measure mass. And the SI unit of mass is kilogram. What you are able to see here, uh, the beam balance. So this one is called the triple beam uh, balance. So if you find any of these, just know that we are looking at uh, the beam balance. Okay, and how it works, that is another part to learn in um, physics at some point. Okay, then the fourth one that we can look at is the measuring cylinders or our measuring cylinders. Measuring cylinders are used to measure the approximate volume. So here you need to be careful. It doesn't measure the accurate volume, instead approximate volume of liquids the function of measuring cylinder take note of the keyword approximate okay so there are different uh, types of uh, measuring cylinders out there and of different sizes some of the measuring cylinders in terms of size that we can look at are these as you can see and i guess these diagrams are clear in the case you find one in an exam you should be able to identify that this is a measuring cylinder and for you to know um this part you need to know it let us look at the bullet okay so the bullet is used to measure accurate volume of liquids so simply used to measure the accurate volume of liquids so here we have accurate remember measuring uh cylinder we said approximate but here bullet we are saying accurate which means accurate volume the exact volume that you are looking at okay can measure the small volume such as the 20.5 okay cubic centimeter of the liquid just as an example in terms of accuracy so the the bullets they are normally like this okay so on top there there are numbers starting from zero it increases all the way let us say the volume is um 25 let me say 25 they differ in size says 25 okay so starting from 0 to 25 so that is the way it is but one thing you should know is that they have also a tap that you open at the bottom so it's more like this one so this is a bullet what is important is that are you able to identify it whether it comes in a drawing part or just like that okay but one thing is that the bullet this side is open that is something that you should uh know shouldn't uh mistaken this one with uh the that is the separation uh funnel okay the pipette 
Number six, the pipette. So the pipette measure the fixed volume of the liquid. Remember, measuring cylinder approximate. Bullate, accurate. Pipette, fixed. So fixed, if it's 25, is 25. So fixed volume of the liquid. Okay? So that is something very important. Though this one is not clear, but you can look at it uh, looking like this. Okay, looking like this. So, something that uh, looks like this. Then we have the flask. The flask, there are three that we are going to look at. So, three types of flask. We have the round bottom flask, the conical flask, and the flat bottom flask. Let us start with this one, which is the flat bottomed flask. So the flat bottomed flask is used in carrying out reactions involving solid and liquids. So the flat bottomed flask looks like this one, simply flat at the bottom. That is why it's called the flat bottomed flask. And the function is carrying out reactions involving solid and liquids. Then we have the round bottomed flask. I guess you can guess from this one. So it is round at the bottom and its shape enable is it uh, enables uniform heating of the liquid in the container so normally for uh, in the uh, it contains so normally for heating okay so it is used for heating liquids for longer period so look at the diagram so at the bottom is round so that is what you call the round bottomed flask okay what about the conical flask so the conical flask is used for mixing liquid while shaking okay so if you're cutting out titration it's the one that you use uh, and it normally looks like this so this is what you call the conical uh, flask and i hope you should be able to identify it whether drawn or given an image should be able to identify it then we have the beakers so the beakers are used for heating liquids. Beakers are used for heating liquids. And they come in different sizes. So used for heating liquids. They are used for mixing liquid while using volume uh, too big for the test tubes. So these are two functions of the beakers that we can talk of. Like I said, they come in different sizes. As you can see, different sizes of the beakers. So what is important is that are you able to identify the beaker? Okay, so that is most important. Then we have the test tubes, which are used for heating and mixing. If you are going to carry out experiments in the laboratory, especially when it comes to reducing sugars, you are going to use the test tubes for uh, uh, normally for heating and mixing of um, liquids. Okay, so these are held on the test tube rack. These are test tubes that you are able to, to, to see. Then let us talk of the Bunsen burner, and this is normally used for heating. So Bunsen burner, it is like this, and what you need to know on this part is the types of flame. Okay, they differ in colors, so you need to know that part. Then also what is the use of the air hole, what is the use of the column, all these things you need to know them, okay, on the Bunsen burner. Then, like I said, the spirit banner is also what is used. So, this is called a spirit banner. Okay. Then, separating funnel. This is something that you are going to look at. And this is the most common part, I think, that I've seen in an exam. The separating funnel. It does come most of the time. But, we cannot say it... Uh, yeah, it does come. So, please, you need to know it. So, this part, I've left it to you. Make sure that you research on the separating funnel... What is it used for? What makes it possible for that use that you're going to look at? Okay. So we can end here. And uh, before we go, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. And if you've enjoyed the lesson, do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure that you invite your friend. Those that are writing next year GCE, I have a good news for you. We are enrolling for GCE. 2025 okay so physical lessons as well as online lessons for online lessons 
uh, you can contact the number 0976 four zero two five six three even for physical contact the same number we are found in uh we are found in uh lusaka that is kawata area near kawata primary school along 80th street so if you are interested to join us make sure that you get in touch we'll be uh happy to have you in class otherwise see you in the next one